Well, hello again, everyone. I'm so happy to see all of you today. Um, the last meeting, I, we canceled because we only had a couple of people and it was during Labor Day weekend. So you know what, it's, there are some months when it just doesn't, or it was August, um, where everybody was on vacations a lot. So you know what, we do these when we have enough women to do it and when you have a chance to share whatever it is that you have coming up. So I'm really glad that you're all here today. And um, today's 9-11. How many of you, raise your hand, if did you have somebody you knew that passed away in a 9-11 plane or building? Anybody? No? Okay. So I did. So I think one of the reasons why I had such a great run today is my friend Dan Brandhorst. I worked in higher education before um, I started both of my businesses. And Dan was from Liverpool, New York. Um, he was an alum of Lemoyne College, and because he was closer to my age, I just got along with him really, really well. Um, he eventually was in New York City, um, and um, he was traveling. He had gone to Boston and was traveling with his partner and their son in the second plane um, that hit the trade, one of the um, buildings and perished in that. And I was so shocked and so saddened. He's just been somebody who's been in my mind for a really long time. I knew him for about seven years. He, uh, every time I hear Radio City Music Hall, we would do alumni events down in New York City and Dan would host us. And so Dan was responsible for letting me see a Radio City Music Hall event. He had tickets for uh, James Taylor for me. So I just um, today felt so inspired to just run in his memory. And I actually had a full conversation when I ran the five miles with him, like, hey, how's it going up there? <laughs> Are you going to help me run Boston again? You know, how, you know, and it was just, um, I just think a cool way to be able to honor somebody. And I wore my New York uh, Yankees hat, but I wanted it to be for all the firefighters and the policemen and the, you know, the, the MTs and the docs and everybody who helped on that, on that day. So just a little 9-11, um, memory for all of you. And I think sometimes when people pass away, the best thing you can do is continue to talk about them and honor them anyway. So my run went really easy today, having that conversation. So anyways, just wanted to share that. Love my Dan Brandhorst. Um, so with that being said, we will move on to happier and lighter news. So I'm just going to have introduce you. You can unmute yourselves. And again, I'll just kind of time you about five minutes just so I can make sure everybody gets a chance to speak. And we'll just go by the way that you appeared um, today. So Jennifer, you are the first one up. So go ahead. You have five minutes. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you for your story. I really appreciate hearing about him and also that you had that wonderful conversation with him because I do that too. You know, I, I don't have anybody from 9-11, but I have my own people that have passed and um, I like having those conversations. It's a really yes. important yes, continuance. Thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you, hon. Yeah, so um, I'm Jennifer from What If Wellness and um, I am located in Geneva, New York. And... Um, I have been doing a lot of different things recently. My my main focus is helping people feel safe, being who they are and becoming who they most want to be. And safe includes physical, emotional, every level of safe. So I teach self-defense classes and I teach emotional, um, not so much defense classes, but emotional strength classes, I guess is how you'd call it. I teach forgiveness and I teach uh, infinite possibilities so that when you feel stuck and you know backed up against a wall you can start finding new ideas and new solutions and maybe even a little more playfulness to get you there um i i really enjoy all of the different things that i do but one of my challenges is taming myself and just focusing on one or two to be able to give it the attention that it needs so for this fall, I'm doing a kind of a, a tamped down piece of my infinite possibilities class combined with my curiosity and art. So I'm going to be offering some classes on how to make your own what if card. I, I make what if cards and sell them 
and they're digitally produced with um, digital pictures and and all that you know it looks looks like a picture instead of a drawing and um, I'm teaching people how to access their own curiosity their own question that serves the outcome that they most want and then to lean into whatever the picture is that would serve them best as a reminder of how they want to lean into that question. So I'm going to be doing that here in Geneva in physical and um, also online. I'll be offering it a couple times that way. And I actually just finished a proposal to the National um, Conference of Energy Psychology, Association for Energy Psychology, something, something. I can't remember all the letters. But I'm going to be offering that same workshop to them as a possibility for next spring. And I'm really excited about that. Another thing that I am working on for this fall is, and I was just inspired to do this last Friday, is I'm going to be calling um, the Silver, Sne Silver Sneakers Organization to see how I can partner with them with my How to Land Safely When You Fall class. I'm the only person that I know of that teaches a class on how to teach your brain and your body how to land safely when you fall. I created the class back in 2016 for my mother and uh, she and I filmed it as we did it. And I've had it online to sell for a while, but I haven't really done it. I haven't really leaned into it at all. And I'm I'm not really into that part of it. So the, the the finding the right people to sell it to part, I'm just not really excited about that piece. But Silver Sneakers already has a huge population that they serve that it would be a great fit for. So I've decided that I'm going to reach out to them and see if one, I could teach it live online. They do uh, online classes and they teach you as an instructor, or they allow you as an instructor to teach classes live online. And then also they have uh, the um, online pre-recorded classes that I could use. And again, it's a conversation with my mother because she passed in 2018. So I have this whole thing where I see her all the time and her making jokes about me, um, <laughs> like my daughter dragged me into this and I'm really glad she did. Um, <laughs> and, and I still continue that conversation and thank her for that because, um, because I'm really grateful to her for being willing to be my guinea pig to see if it would work, to see if my idea had any validity. So, so those are the two biggest things that I'm working on right now, and I'm excited to see how they move forward. I'm also working part-time at FLCC as a career advisor, tech, tech um, specialist, where I do, I help with all the, the background database stuff and all that junk, you know, the, the junk of running the program. And then last week, I got to substitute teach for the first time in the ESL program. And I'm, I'm meant to teach. I know that that is my gift. And so it was really fun to get to do that in the job that I didn't think I was going to be teaching in. So <laughs> it, it was really fun to to get to meet all the ladies across. We have a an online advanced ESL class, and it's all across the Finger Lakes. So I got to meet uh, 12 or 15 women, depending on the day, who are struggling, learning, and committed mm -hmm. to learning English. And it's really what a what a great group they are so inspiring in all their different stories so, oh, so that's yeah. me that's me right now thank you for listening <laughs> and I look forward to hearing how you guys are doing you did perfect there 13 seconds to go that, those, <laughs> the, the um I love the the what if cards I was like thinking of the women that are actually here right now and and even for myself with some of the sports that I'm doing and some other things. And I think that's a great idea. I mean, so does your silver sneakers. And I, I would say that, you know, it's up to us if we have presentation ideas to be the ones that do need to reach out to organizations and, and pitch in a sense what we have, because no one's going to know that we have great material or who we are if we don't do it. So, you know, I think that speaks for anybody within that owns a business that has something to share. So thank you for mentioning that so that others can think of it themselves. So thank you, my dear. Thank you. Yeah.
All right, Mary, and you are next, my friend. You have to just unmute yourself. Okay, there, you go. there I go. There you go. You, you got it, you know, like all hyped up from your five mile run this morning. And <laughs> I'm thinking if I tried five miles, you would be calling the ambulance and hauling me <laughs> off on the side of the road because there's no way. I couldn't even walk five miles, let alone run five miles. So good for you. Thank I'm supporting you, you all the way. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm Marian Andrews, and um, some of you I haven't met. So it's really nice to meet you, Jenny and, and April. I haven't met you before. I know Jody, and uh, when Jill comes on, or if she does, I know her. So it's kind of nice to see, you know, old friends, not that kind of old, but you know what I mean. And meet new ones. It's always a pleasure on these calls to have an opportunity to hear what other people are doing. And uh, Jenny, I'm just Jennifer. Do you go by Jenny? Whatever, right? Okay, Jennifer. Whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you, your work sounds so interesting and, and exciting. And it's a very, it's a nice thing that you're doing, uh, especially the one coming with silver sneakers, which gave me an idea of somebody else I could contact as well. Um, I have been not working for more than a year because I was uh, dealing with a uh, reoccurrence of cancer and it took nine months of chemo and then a surgery and a whole bunch of other things, but I'm back. I am feeling really every day a little better. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not completely healed inside, but there's no cancer, none, none, zero. <laughs> it's like, when we had the scan, the surgeon said, I see absolutely no active cancer cells. You know, they're never going to say you're 100% clear because that would be too dangerous. But he saw no active cells. So I am taking that as meaning, yay, I'm cancer free and I don't need that back. Um, I um, am a Reiki master and I teach an angel communicator and I teach classes about angels. And um, I was given the outline of the class that I needed to come up with back in February. I was doing a meditation and when I got finished, I had to write angel classes. And I, I love the angels because I always ask them to be very, very, very specific with me because I don't do well with subtle references so they gave me all of the information expand the class to an hour and a half the intro should be five minutes the, <laughs> they gave me the exact timing which is like okay and then a few weeks a few months ago somebody said when are you going to do the angels classes and I said whenever the angels tell me and then we got talking and I thought wait February I remember they told me <laughs> But I had a few more things to go through. So classes start on September 23rd, and it will be 10 sessions. I have uh, October 14th and 15th off because I'm doing a um, master fire, uh, holy fire master course uh, in Reiki that weekend. So I'm taking an additional course in Reiki. So it is so fun to get back into doing this. Uh, I have depended on the angels so much in the last year with this session of chemo because it was far harder than the previous three sessions that I had in, in 2014, 15, and 16, which, you know, now I'm like almost nine years older too, which, you know, I suppose, I suppose has something to do with it. <laughs> uh, but the meditation of in the class, I used to do a fairly short meditation for about 10 minutes. And the one suggestion I had from all of the classes I did is that the meditation was too short. It, I, because I meditate every day, I can get into meditation very quickly, but other people um, don't or haven't, or haven't even tried meditation. And so I've, I've expanded that. They told me at least 30 minutes for the meditation. So that will mean like a longer intro to get us settled in. And it will be about the angel of that week. So 
Um, I've been doing a lot of extra research and getting a lot of extra information about each angel. Um, we do 10, 10 angels and in that time. As well, uh, there will be a text out every day after that, just as a reminder, like the first angel we do always is Archangel Michael, because he's like the powerhouse for me. And so um, then each day there will be a little tidbit about Michael or just a reminder, because I really want everyone to spend the whole week, even two minutes thinking about that angel because otherwise you're not going to get the whole benefit of the class. You'll, you know, um, so my daughter is visiting me from Calgary and she's very, very tech. Uh, I used to be the one that knew how to do things on the computer, but now she knows everything about computers. <laughs> I still know the hardware better than her, but she does the software so well. Anyway, she just set it up this morning that I have a text program. I can, I can write the text and it'll send it out automatically every day. And so I think that's going to be a big addition to the class is to keep us together and to keep us focused on when it comes like Wednesday and you've almost forgotten what angel that we were talking about. You'll get a little text that says, Michael's doing this today or Michael's told me this today because he talks quite loud. Actually, when you said you were talking to your friend, that's, often how I talk with the angels because they they tell me specifically and I ask for specifics. So that's another thing that, that you will learn in the class is that it's really quite easy. I mean, all sorts of, I'm a, every religion has angels of some form. They may not always call them the same, uh, but everybody has that spiritual instructor and the guardian angel that is with you from you know, day one. And so why not get to talk with them? I I love what um, an angel communicator from Scotland, Kyle Gray, he said, if you're not help, you know, asking and, and using the angels for input, they're unemployed. <laughs> you know, So we don't want unemployed angels around us. So, <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. I'm just so impressed with you, Marion, because I, even through your updates, you know, with me or, or, you know, I don't know how many really did online, but I mean, just the sheer, your sheer will to, to be healthy and to get through all of this and it not being easy, just I'm, you're very inspirational and I'm so glad there is absolutely no cancer. You keep going, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the make only, sure that, well, go ahead, honey. The only thing with that is that, okay, then I still have to do this work, you know, <laughs> as long as I was feeling that I didn't, I was sick, I could take the time off, you know, so, right. but now they're saying, um, you're done being sick, like, let's get on. <laughs> <laughs> They know you do it well. We'll make sure that, um, or I'll go to your website, or if you can share it, I'll put the um, event information up there for Angels class. Yeah, I'll and send it over to you. Yes. Yeah, that would be awesome. Okay, right. thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so April, you were next uh, appearing in. So there you go, Hi, my friend. Buddy. Hello. It's nice to be here today. Tracy, well done on the mileage. Thank you. We'll yeah, see how I amazing. go up and down the stairs later. The knees are like. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I understand. Well done. Thank so you. my name is April Cacciatore. I, I'm from Rome and I own Sensations Therapeutic Massage um, 18 years now. I am a licensed massage therapist as well as a life coach and author, a retreat leader. I've produced a subscription box. I did just become a Reiki master as well. I've just certified an energy mastery. It, I feel like we all continue to learn and evolve and up level in, in our chosen paths. And some of our paths aren't always chosen. They we're walking along and we veer to the left or we veer to the right. And next thing you know, we have a new something, something coming into our life, which is all well and good because there's so much out there. I always say there's just not enough time in the day. Um, I'm also an artist. I love to paint and I've been really focusing in on painting a lot more. 
um, because it brings me so much joy. What's coming up for me currently is September 20th. I have two beautiful women coming in from the Midwest, uh, Canaway CBD representatives. We're doing a CBD uh, workshop at the Kabari Wellness Institute in Rome, CBD Science and Business Forum. We're going to have a morning event at 9 a.m. for wellness professionals and then at 6.45 that evening for everybody else to learn about CBD, why it's important, how it can benefit you. Um, any questions people may have, you know, people, people still just don't really know the truth about CBD. And this comes from hemp. There's no THC in what we're talking about. Although we will talk about products that include THC, um, hemp and cannabis are medi have medicinal purposes as well as many others. Um, so I'm excited about that. That's on the 20th. And then on the 23rd, I have a retreat at Lake Delta. Last year, it was at Pixley Falls. Tracy, I just haven't gotten it to you yet. I'm sort of running late on things. I did have a knee re replacement in March, and I too am getting my removing groove back on. And it does take a little bit more than you realize. Atrophy is real when you're in recovery, right? Um, recovering from surgery, illness, what have you. So on the 23rd, the, the day retreat is called Unchain Your Mind. The Art of Breaking Free from Limiting Beliefs. So we're going to focus in on that. But what goes along with it is uh, my good friend, Elena Bone, is going to be facilitating some yoga in the morning and we'll be closing out with some yoga, gentle yoga, yin yoga. And uh, we'll have some abstract painting in between. We're going to do ugly paintings in the morning on paper and then in the afternoon, everyone will have a canvas that we will apply. And I keep it really simple so that it's you're very successful. So many people say, I can't draw. I can't draw a straight line. Nobody wants a straight line, especially in abstract art. It's so freeing to choose three colors, go with the three colors, and maybe add white and black in there somewhere, somehow. And it's, it'll be a really fun experiment for people to let loose again, moving past limiting beliefs of I can't. Um, that is our theme for the day. And we'll be having, you know, some sit down, deep dive coaching in there in the group as well. So that's Saturday, the 23rd from 10 to 4. Um, other than that, I've been doing massage. I'm back in the office working on um, my CBD group and uh, network marketing group that I'm co-hosting with Joy and Janet, my lovely woman from the Midwest. Always on the go, always moving. We're always, we always have something in the works. I'm, I'm sure as all of you do, because why? We're women entrepreneurs. Yeah. Speak to the fact Ooh. that first of all, Lake Delta, I grew up on Lake Delta. Mm -hmm. So it's like, as soon as you said that, my heart like kind of melted, you know what I mean? That's where I, that's where I was. Um, and I went last year to the Pixley Falls event, which I used to go to as a very young um, child with my parents who were coaches, they would, they would mm -hmm. meet other coaches and their families there. And it was really amazing that I had this, um, April did such a great job and I walked away and, and it was something about, you said something about my birthright, um, being in sports. And that was really when I was just starting to begin thinking about yeah. doing more on the athletic side. And that has stuck with me. That line that you said to me stuck with me. It's your, birthright. I love that. Yeah. Because the power I, of a group is it's divine connection. Everybody that coach comes, shows up to the event, belongs there together. And we all have so much to deliver for each other with each other. So I love, I love that everybody, I believe got something out of it. And um, it's super exciting for me to see the group come together like it does. I, I so want to be there. And of course I told you that that's the weekend. My son moved to Connecticut and we're scheduled to go down there. Yeah. And see their, their new place. And I'm like, ah, really next year I'll do more. I had a late start this year. Um, recovery took me, the recovery is beautiful. My knee is great, but I also needed a much needed rest. So I took advantage of that and I didn't push. And yeah. the girls that were there last year kept saying, April, are you going to give us a date? Are you going to give us a date? Are you going to? So <laughs> I said, okay, this is the date I can do. And 
um, it'll happen. Yeah, well, oh, I'm just sorry good. personally that I'm missing it. And if any of you <laughs> have, an, especially with a painting, I love that concept too. So mm -hmm. if any of you have that, we can open Rome's beautiful, like Delta's beautiful. So um, learn more I'll about it. I'll send you the link, Tracy. Okay, thank you. That'd be great. Can I put it in chat? You can put it in chat. That would be great. I can get thank it from you. there and everybody okay. else can too. So thank you. thank you, my dear. I hope thank it goes you. well. I'll be thinking of you as I'm seeing my lovely son. So <laughs> yes. Thanks so much. Okay, Jody, my friend, you are up there with your bird background. I like that. <laughs> so that background comes from I belong to a group called Miracy. And, um, you know, I don't have a lot to share about me, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about Miracy. Sure. Miracy is a company founded by Danny Eney, and he it does teaches online. It's an online course for how to create an online course. That's what Miracy is all about. And three times a year, they do these events. So this background comes from one of the Miracy events. And um, I just, it's easier than having... A background where I have to close the curtains and you know figure out what's going on so I just keep this on except when I'm teaching piano oh that's what I forgot um uh, except when I'm teaching piano when I need to the kids need to see the keyboard when I'm teaching online which I don't hopefully have to do very often anymore now that the pandemic is well sort of gone um my name is Jody Brown my company is Holy Education Holy Education um, April, it's it's nice to meet someone new. Um, I think Mar Marion and Jennifer and Tracy have all heard this story many times. Holy education comes from the time when I found out that the words heal, H-E-A-L, whole, W-H-O-L-E, and holy, H-O-L-Y, all come from the same root word, the old English word hal, H-A-L. And I was so fascinated by that. I was like, wow, how did... Those three concepts, how was there ever a time when they were so intertwined that you only needed one word for that? That's just, it. to this day, it still fascinates me. Although we are coming, and then I wondered, how did they get so disintegrated that we needed three different words for them? But I think with holistic health, um, we're, we're coming back around to, to joining those three words together, that to be healed is to be whole, is to be holy, sacred, is spiritual, however you want to say it. My big thing is connecting health and spirituality. Um, I think there are a lot of people out there who are very health conscious, who kind of tend to ignore the spiritual component of their health. And I think there are a lot of people out there who are very spiritually or oriented and tend to neglect the health necessity to the, to the, the how he health is related to your spirituality. So that's, that's my focus. Um, I have not really done anything with my business this year and I wish I had an excuse like like you Marion <laughs> um I did have bunion surgery in in February and I am finally seven months later finally able to do my Fitbit steps again I have my little Fitbit here that 250 steps every hour um I was doing that so well and it's it took me until August. In August, I started a homeopathic remedy. I had tingling in my foot from the day of surgery until August when I started taking this homeopathic remedy. And I am so grateful that the tingling in my foot is finally gone. I don't know that it ever would have gone away if I hadn't started taking this homeopathic remedy. And I'm continuing to take it. And every day I lost a lot of um, talk about atrophy. I'm not sure if it was atrophy April, but I lost a lot of range of motion in my foot because I couldn't move it. And I'm gradually getting that range of motion in my foot back too. So I, I <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, if I had known, there was nothing wrong with my, my bunion. It wasn't hurting me. All I wanted to do is be able to fit into a pair of shoes better. Vanity is why I had this surgery. If I had to redo it, I would never do it again. Oh, this was awful. But anyway, um, so, and then, um, in June, I lost a very, very close, near and dear old friend. We'd known each other since first grade, been close and intimate since um, after high school, right up until he had passed away. I uh, lost him in June, and um, I'm in grieving mode still. Um, so, I mean, those are, those are my two excuses. I don't know what, what you want to call them. Um, 
I'm going to read you my, my litany. I can't believe I forgot the piano. That's the very first one. I was just, as you were all talking, I was writing down, I, I always forget something, and I did, of what I do because I do so many things, like you, April. Um, I have been teaching piano since 1976. I'm a Suzuki piano instructor. Um, I am a childbirth educator. I started that in 1978. Um, I haven't really done anything with it lately because I'm so well past my childbearing years. But I've got some pregnant friends that I'm kind of handing out my my, my brochures to. In 1986, I started with a company called Discovery Toys. I don't do anything with that either, but um, I still have my website. If you ever need any kids' toys for anything, I'll, let me know. I'll give you my website. In uh, 1999, I started doing Reiki. I can't remember when I got my Reiki master. It was probably three or four years after that. Um, I'm also a retreat leader. In 2008, I took an uh, a, a training with uh, Sarah Van Brennock, who wrote Simple Abundance. I'm a Simple Abundance certified leader. Um, a couple of years ago, it's probably two or three years ago now, I realized that Sarah and I have slightly different journeys. So I started doing my own, um, her, her, her thing. Let's see if I can remember the six things. She started with gratitude. And I totally, to this day, believe that the foundation for everything you ever do starts with gratitude. If, if thank you was the only prayer you ever said, that would be enough. My stray heart. So gratitude leads to simplicity which leads to order, which leads to harmony, beauty, joy. Her, It's her her path from gratitude to joy. And I won't go into any more of the story than that, except that I came up with another path. And it's been a, a while since I did my retreat. It starts with gratitude and ends with inner peace. Gratitude, forgiveness. No, gratitude, meditation, forgiveness, something Oh, balance, inner peace. Mine's only five. Yeah, so that's that's my journey. And in, in my retreats, I tell people, this is my journey. My journey may not be your journey, but I hope there are some parts of my journey that will help you on your journey. So that's that's my retreat. In uh, 2014, I went through the Institute, or in 2013 to 2014, I graduated in 2014, went through the Integrative Institute of Nutrition's health coaching program. So I'm a certified health coach. And um in uh oh i forgot 2001 i became a ulc ordained minister and i've been a wedding officiant well i've been a wedding officiant since then but i started actually actively being a wedding officiant in 2016 so um i joined the miracy program in 2020 during the pandemic um and have not really followed through on any of those i've tried but i haven't given it what it needs work it needs to be done so it looks to me though i i see so much of your um because you're great at posting on facebook when you're doing weddings so you know interesting enough because i know earlier this year i believe through one of our meetings we talked about making sure that you had a efficient web page on facebook and i don't know if that's helped you or not but that's mm -hmm. when i think of you i think of you more the most because of that marketing as an officiant than of the other things. Well, so. that's, that's good to hear. Thank you. Now, not only, um, and I'm, I'm sure it wasn't a hundred percent you, it was 50% this group and 50% another group I belong to who told me I should have a separate website for my wedding officiant. And I do have that too. Still every wedding I have ever done over the past seven years now has come from a website called Thumbtack. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Thumbtack, but that's where I get my weddings from. So uh, the, the Facebook page and the, in the, um, in the, the website. Well, <laughs> yeah. thank, thank you for sharing all that you're doing. As we can see, all of you have many things and maybe that's the truth of us, you know, as women entrepreneurs, somebody, when I first started my business, um, there was a woman who was 60 at the time I was in my twenties. I'm like, wow, she's 60. I'll be 60 next year. And she said, you know, sometimes your entrepreneurial journey kind of just, um, you know, it sort of leads you, you might think it's going to go in a straight line, but sometimes it naturally curves and it's up to you to follow kind of that natural curve. And so, you know, I think with all of us, for me, you know, started as an event planner, then an event planner for women, you know, and then my athletics has come with that as well. So I think women can do it all. And sometimes we're more focused on specific parts of our business um, than others in terms of what we're producing or what we're offering. And I think that's totally, totally fine. Let me ask you this, because you're all done introducing yourselves. 
do you have questions? Should I unmute you all? Do you have questions for each other? Or do you want to talk about, um, I guess I should unmute you. How do we even do that? Or do you want to unmute your, uh, unmute all? Do you want to unmute yourselves? I guess my question is, do you want to talk about the three month plan or do you, would you rather talk amongst yourselves on some of the things that you brought up? Because I thought there were a lot of great ideas that everybody could use that that people mentioned. Um, so let me think. Yep, Jody, go I, ahead. I, 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 am I you all unmute yourselves? Because I can't somehow figure out. I did, I unmuted. Okay, good. Okay. I just want to mention that and um, one of the things that came across, I don't know if it was a, a Facebook post or a, a email, something. It's called the 12 week, oh, something or other. And one of the, what I like about the three month plan with 12 weeks, three months, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, I'm going to give you another tangent too, and then I'll come back. In, in the Miracy program, one of the things they have is what's called the ACEs program, where for <clears throat> twenty thousand plus dollars a year they take you on these three month sprints to get from where you are in your business to where you want to be but in the 12-week program which i i signed up for and then never went to except i listened to one video and this is what stuck in my mind and i, I would like to talk more about this when you have a whole year of planning you tend to procrastinate because you have all that time when you put it into a three month or 12 week or however you want to do it program, all of a sudden that deadline makes things happen faster. And that is like, wow. Now mm -hmm. it hasn't motivated me to work on that yet, <laughs> but I think it's a great idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we all get these ideas yeah. and <laughs> Uh, or else we wouldn't be entrepreneurs, right? Like <laughs> if well, uh, other people that just go to a job, they don't get these ideas that, oh, this sounds like fun and oh, I'll try this. And, and I think it was you, Jennifer, that said you have so many things, it's hard to focus on one or two. Right. And so that has been me. I, I forgot to mention that I have become an ordained minister for uh, weddings and funerals as well. So I haven't done anything with that, but I did take a class and, uh, and uh, became ordained. So that's a fun thing to add. But again, like <laughs> we have so many, right. but I'm concentrating on the angels classes uh, as well. well. As, I, I'm sorry, but I just want to I, say very quickly, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. I thought you, I just want ahead. to say, I'm so happy to see you back, Marion. It is so good to see you. And I also want to tell you, if you ever have any questions or or if there's anything I can do to help you, because I have done this for several years now, um, I, mm -hmm. please feel free to reach out to me. I would, I would love to help you if I could. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, it's hard to just focus on one or two things, right? Yeah. So it, it's, um, I'm in that same boat. I love to do Reiki, but to go through that whole thing of establishing clients again and, and doing all that work. Um, and I changed my treatment room into my healing room. So I have my healing altar in there and my chair and my day bed. So I use that a lot uh, in the past year and a half. So it's no longer a treatment room as such, <laughs> you know. So my massage Your tables are room. <laughs> it was definitely. And it <laughs> is, it's wonderful because my daughter's here and she's able to sleep right there. There's a bathroom attached and everything. And so it's a little cozy place. And it probably isn't going to go back to being a Reiki treatment room again. So right. but we yeah. have to keep choosing. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, the thing I was going to say, because it relates to April in a sense, and even to Jennifer with the classes she's offering, three months, you know, I've been an event planner for 30 years. So um, three months is kind of, in my mind, the minimal amount of good mm -hmm. time to market something. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we can do a month or we can do a couple of weeks out, but honestly, like a three month to six month for an event in order to really get the marketing out. So if and, and maybe six months is for a much larger, big event, mm -hmm. but a three month period of time. So if you think of this three month plan for the year, you know, within it's seeming like a quarter, then April, you could say, you know, fit that event planning. If you know you're going to do this event every year in the fall in September, mm -hmm. you know, and back it out. 
Um, so that's, a, that's another good way to use a three month program is especially if you have events coming up. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense and, um, it keeps you on track. Um, I almost went the year without even doing this event, mm -hmm. but the audience is already there. They're already subscribed. So <laughs> we'll show up together and do it. But yeah, I love the three month idea, especially with the holidays coming. Once we, mm -hmm. once we get into full swing, even mid October, whoosh, the season comes and right. we're all caught up in it. And then it's new year's and whatever brand new programs or recurring programs or launch dates for January, February, March, 10, then you're, then you're in another frantic mode of, Oh, I've got to get this out. So now is the time to have marketing in place and your content ready to go. I like to batch content as well. Yeah. And the other thing I'll just say, there's um, a couple out of all my years of doing events, um, January, don't plan anything too much sooner than mid January, like literally the 15th or the 20th, because mm -hmm. everyone's catching up from everything that's mm -hmm. coming. The same thing for the month of August can be a really hard month to plan because everyone just as mm -hmm. even our monthly meeting, people are in this different mindset of it's almost the end of summer, kids go to college, kids go whatever. So um, if you keep that in mind too, or if you ever have any questions about event planning specifically, like what works and doesn't make sure you, you let me know, but the PR part is, is really what's important. And somebody said to me once, and I think it was in the height of my women ties, you know, planning so many events a year in so many different places. And they're like, oh my God, all you do is market. And I'm like, that's the thing. You have to market, 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 market all the time. So if you have an event or if you have something you're trying to sell product service wise, whatever, Make sure you're giving yourself enough time, which yeah. that three month period of time gives you. So last year around this time, or maybe it was even a month later, I decided I wanted to do a program in January called new, new year, new me. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what happened. I never marketed it and the date came and went, but this year. So I haven't even done it yet. I, I mean, the program is done. I just, now all I need to do is market it. So right. you, you're saying I shouldn't, I was going to do it in the beginning of January, but you, you think I should wait until the middle of January before. It's I, a, it's, think middle, I think middle of January, um, you know, I always kicked off our women's high year programming in Ithaca. And I always waited till the 15th or 18th to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Just because think about yourself, you know, you have family in or you've traveled to family and then, or you have bills that you're paying or you're, you know what I mean? Your money's low because, you know, your customer's money might be low because everybody's just spent all this money on the holidays. So I believe that even a January 15th become a new you is still uh, uh, yeah. A all right. So I just looked at the calendar and the 7, 14, 21, 28, would you go with the 14th or the 21st? I'm doing them on Sundays. It's a Sunday afternoon retreat. Okay. I would also, this is my, my other event planning tip is to just be careful around the holidays. Now, I don't know how, it, what is it? It's not present. It's Martin Luther King Day, January 19th, something like that. I don't know whether or not your clientele or kids that are off of school, depend. you know what I mean? Whether that's important. I used to have so many women that had kids that I had to make sure I kind of paid attention to the school calendar and holidays. So I would actually look up Rochester school district time mm -hmm. off to make sure I wasn't, you know, you could do it for Rome. So I would tend to go more towards the 21st or okay. I think 15th or 21st. I just think those first two weeks are really tricky. I'm not sure when Martin Luther King Day is next next year. Probably that third Monday. Monday, 22nd, I so think. One eight, well, one eight fifteen. 15 The 15th would be the third because the first is on a Monday. Okay. So it would be Did one eight fifteen. I'm looking it up. I'm yeah. looking it up too. January 15th. So okay. I should probably go with the 21st then because uh, the 14th would be that weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just saying that sometimes it makes a difference if you looked at your clientele and you knew that they were either school teachers or they were, they have kids you know, that go to, to 
not so much college. I mean, my whole schedule changed when my kids were college age because all of a sudden those were different. They were home right. May through mid August. And that's why a lot of my client, you know, we stayed away from kind of the mid August when our kids were in college because all of a sudden you're bringing everybody back. Right. So pay, pay attention to those natural holidays and school holidays or national holidays that could affect your clientele. Because if they're mothers like all of us or grandmothers, you know, they they may have time scheduled off um, to take care of kids or to pay more attention to them. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mary. Um, I have a question about using music. I'm all, going to be recording uh, the angel classes separate from doing them. I want to record them to put them uh, available for mm -hmm. sale. And uh, I'm wondering about what I need to do about getting the music and getting permission for music, that kind of thing. April, do you know anything about that? Have you? I do. I do know a bit. Um, you would need permission or have to pay royalties through ASCAP or BMI. Those are the music royalty industries that protect others' music. As a massage therapist, me playing any type of music that's not original means I'm using it towards revenue. Same mm -hmm. thing in a paid uh, program where you're selling it digitally, right? So it's being used over and over. Um, sometimes their fees feel a little bit exorbitant, but I would check in, I would Google it and look at music license and rights. How can I use music in my work legally so that it doesn't come back to bite you in the butt? Yeah, um, believe me, the music police have not shown up to my massage practice. However, <laughs> I've always my family owned a restaurant and bar. And, you know, if we we paid ASCAP and BMI through the jukebox and even bands that came in had to come in under the plan originals only title. Okay. Um, and again, there's probably not going to be people monitoring your work but ethically, you should check into it and make sure. And if you know someone that does original work original. or can play some acoustic background that might be appropriate, that might be a really original and unique you know? way to um, make your work stand out. And and is it A S C A P as -C -A -P? yeah as cap? So I can't. I don't know. And Association B is, is, for, is it B and I B M I B M I music okay. B M I. Are you talking about for in person during live classes, or are you talking no, about for recorded? I'm talking, talking about both re recorded, recorded especially, but live classes. If you're using, like, I have live massage happening, and I'm using others' licensed work, even if I bought their CD and I'm playing it, it's still it's like having music on in the restaurant. Music, um, it's part of the ambiance. It's part of what you're selling. Even wow. though it doesn't seem like it, it's right. a part of it legally. Now, again, I haven't, um, you know, had people come in and I'll be honest right now, I'm using Alexa because <laughs> I can pop her into all the treatment rooms through my Amazon account. Mm -hmm. I was, I had a licensed group where I downloaded MPI files and used specifically for massage. And, you know, after then their monthly rate went from very reasonable to very expensive. And um, I let my subscriptions subside and we used that music for years. And honestly, we were totally burnt out on it. I didn't hear it sometimes, but then I would hear it and I would get all like, Oh, I hate this one because I've heard it for years. So I, but I'm saying in a body of recorded work in a live retreat, I think it's easier to just use music that you're using, but in a recorded work, it's recorded. Yes. It was intentional. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I so make just sure that I'm doing it. You as well on recorded meditations, the Pardon? hearing impaired, deaf point of view. Um, I hate when there's music because I can't understand the meditation. Mm. So having two options is really helpful. When I when I go to some summits and things like that, they have the version with the background music and the version without the back, background music. And it makes a huge difference for me. I always choose no background music because I'm still struggling to catch the words. Yeah, yeah um, that's a great point. Yeah, so even while we're on right now, I have uh, Otter on, I don't know if you can see it, captioning this whole call just in case I miss something. 
Um, there is a caption that you could do through Zoom, but oh. I didn't, yeah, I didn't um, mention oh. it at the beginning, but it's definitely something that you could set your, your Oh, the, oh I would love, now. yeah, mm -hmm. I've got a husband who's deaf in one ear, so we usually have captions. I wouldn't, and, and so that's what's, you know, I know that you do have, uh, that you're hearing impaired, but I've never thought of it. So until now, and now I would do it from now on. Um, so thank you for that. Um, yeah. It also creates a transcript, so you can download the transcript at the end of the call, and people sense. can read it instead of watching a recap or whatever. So it's a it's a cool thing that way. But I'm just yeah. I'm just offering that as a possibility when mm -hmm. you do it. You could start without music, and you don't while you're struggling to figure out the rules. <laughs> um, yeah. And there are a lot of people that are hearing impaired or on the edge of it, and they're struggling with words. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um, even before they're as bad as me, you know, right? Look, I here's went mine. completely deaf and now I have a oh, cochlear implant. Oh, oh there you go. hearing aids. I just got hearing yeah, aids I, each year. I, I worked with live music for so many years and it is a struggle because then things get muddled and muted. So that was such a great point, Jen. That's a really great, especially mm -hmm. as, you know, when I started out, I was 30 and, you know, like I said, the woman that was 60, I was like, wow, she's She's mm -hmm. old doing business, you know, it, but my, you know, everybody's gotten the same age progression I have or are older and I've never actually thought of captions. So I That's appreciate That's a great it. idea. Yeah. Yeah. And really for anybody else too. I mean, so it's, a, it's not just related to me and my Zoom, but anybody else doing Zoom or maybe anybody else doing the recorded where, you know, right. you, could, you can see and hear at the same time. This is why I love these meetings because- you, there's so much, we all have these golden nuggets of, of inspiration and wisdom from our experiences and then sharing them. It just is sort of like, oh yeah, you know, that's something I could implement too. I'm just going to be very careful that we're 56 minutes. So I just mm -hmm. want to end kind of with a few things. And then um, I always wish we have more time, but we're all on our time schedules. Um and thank you so much. There's a lot of great content today, as usual. Um, our next meeting it would typically be 10-2, but it's only two weeks away because of Labor Day, and I moved this. So I'm going to go with Wednesday, um, October 11th, um, just to try to get us some distance between this meeting and, and the next one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of sport events coming up soon but we're going to be back hopefully in rochester live um in early october so i've got to get early to mid-october so i've got to get that date set with Lori de prospero and we are trying roller derby in rome April. <laughs> <laughs> with my new knee <laughs> yeah with, oh yeah right i know here's my <laughs> but we are we are trying it so there's i got i'll come watch okay i have a lot of sports, yeah kind of booked um, but we'll keep putting in some of the business things. And yeah. um, if by chance you feel like donating to, to my Boston half marathon mm. run, which the money is going straight to the uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Center, um, I have been sharing that link as well. I'm trying to raise a thousand. It needed to be 500 minimum. We, cut, we hit that right away. I had a woman ties member at the eye center in Cortland. If you ever need eye care, all women owned every every person that works there is a female love them mm. they decided to up and gave like 250 bucks or something for me to hit the 500 and then I said oh well okay now I gotta go to a thousand <laughs> so um if you want to I think of Marianne, what excuse me pop the link into the chat real quick yeah oh okay I don't know if I'm that talented okay We'll look for uh, it. The, we'll go, I'll go to Women Ties and find it. Okay, thank you. I don't know how to get to some different places, but thank you for that. Um, and I think that's all of my news with two minutes to go. Anything else from anybody? Send me your event stuff because I'm one of those promoters. In fact, Catherine Switzer was in town yesterday and I was promoting that out of the fact she was here. So I love doing that most of anything is promoting women's events. So let me know. Is it so too early? It, to, is it too early to send a save the date for the January thing? Is it too early for nope. that? No. Nope. Not at all. Okay. 
it's just, you know, I put it on my website, make sure you're utilizing, even though people don't like love Facebook still, the way that you create any of the events that you're doing, create the event on Facebook and the ability to share it with anybody that you're connected to makes a really big difference. Okay. Um, yeah. So make sure you're doing that. All yeah. right. I love you all. Thank you so much for being oh, here. Thank you, um, Tracy. Good luck thank to you. everybody on everything that's happening and we'll see you next month. Yeah, wonderful. Bye, bye, for bye now. everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.